Before I take you to J Doc, I'm going to do the Boston first. So, if this were a slide on your lab quiz or exam, you'd have to name the organ you see. So, let's do, ignore this one for right now. What organ is this one on the left? Trachea is the only choice you have, right? How would you know that's a trachea? Round. Round, that's useful. What do you see? There's a hole in the middle. There's a hole in the middle, that's working good. All right, what are these? Cartilage. That's the cartilage ring. So that's one of the clues is that you have something with rings of cartilage going almost all the way around, making a C or signet. It's really huge, big hole, that's got to be your trachea. All right? But you're supposed to name the layers within the trachea. Let's start here. What do you call the center? Lumen. Why is it called that? Because it's the middle. Because it's bright. It illuminates. Right? Remember, got to be a drunk Roman. It's light. It's illuminating. <laughs> What do you call the layer right here, the dark layer, that is touching the lumen? Mucosa, because mucosal touches the edge. So what would you call everything below the mucosa? Submucosa, because it's below. What do you call the very outside you can barely see here? Adventitia. So there's four layers, basically. You have lumen, which I guess isn't a layer. Mucosa, submucosa, adventitia. So if you learn them in that order, it makes some sense. So you can go lumen, mucosa, submucosa, and But wait, there's more. Because you're supposed to know what's in each layer. So we use the Boston and go out to J-Dot. <coughs> so here's a close-up of a trachea. So white space, what is that? <laughs> These cells here, what layer are they in? <laughs> No, that's a tissue they are. What layer are they in? Mucosa. What tissue are they, say ye? PCC. PCC. Pseudostratified ciliate columnar epithelial tissue, right? So the organ is the trachea, the layer is the mucosa, the tissue is the PCC. Okay? So the mucosal layer is pseudostratified ciliate columnar. So then, what layer is this? Submucosa. Let's find some things in there. Oh, these look neat. Where are they? Cells. 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 glands. Very good. Because they make watery snot, which is ceramucus. They're in the submucosal. There's their tubing that they use to dump it on your surface. Those are the ceramucus glands, also called submucosal glands. So are those connected to the goblet cells then? No? no, they should come out as a duct, but the goblet cells serve a similar purpose. Right, okay. But they're just different locations. Okay. You okay in our submucosa, our cerebucus glands? Okay. Mm -hmm. So then let's zoom out again. Wait a minute, so where are the goblet cells in? They would be up in the PCC. I thought so those would be? Right here. Oh. There. There's one there. Okay. I'll get you a close up. Hold on. You okay on those layers so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, smart kitties. <laughs> let's make you hurt. Right. No, thank you. So, if I had this picture and wanted to find a tracheallis muscle, where would I go? <coughs> I would go to the back of your trachea and look in here. It's not shown very well, but there's a muscle that connects the C of your trachea. That's called tracheallis. It bends those rings close together. So it's on the back side against this thing. What in the world is that? That's an esophagus. That's your food tube. So the windpipe's in the front, the food tube's in the back, the tracheallis forms that layer kind of between the two. But that would also be considered submucosal. Is it only back there, not anterior? It's not anterior. It's always in the back. Yes. So what happens is it's supposed to bend those rings closer <coughs> to the cough, for example, to so stretch them this way. So I, I thought that the tracheal cartilages were a C shape and the only yes. opening was in the back. Yes. But on there, it looks like there's three... Right. Well, they just did a weird cut. Okay. But this should be complete. Okay. They missed it here and here. Okay. That would be complete. And then, yeah, the trick gets me there. Okay. So they just don't look C in this picture. Okay. Right. Okay, those? So the okay. is in the back. In the back, in the posterior. <laughs> on your slides, you can see it. Because I, I saw it on some of your slides. So let me show you this, then. Let's go to JDOC. My favorite place to be. Now, let's not show you anything. I want you to cry. 
Alright, so if this were on a test, <laughs> let me ask the question first, please. What <laughs> organism? Now say, Alright, how did you know that's not a trachea? Doesn't look like right. You can't see layers, you can't see rings, you can't see this is not a trachea, right? So your two choices are trachea or what? <coughs> Coffee up mine now. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start zooming in on the lung. I'm going to show you something. And that is like this picture here. Oh, that's cool looking. That is cool. That's one of my favorite slides. This is a bronchus, which is not something you have to know on a slide. But let's look at those layers again. So if you know those layers are trachea, you know the layers everywhere. So if I pointed here, you would say that's what? Mm -hmm. If I pointed to this here, you would say? PCC. Mucosa made of PCC. If I pointed to all this, you would say? Mucosa. Mucosa. I pointed out here somewhere, about here. Adventitia. It's the same layers in every tube. So even if this weren't a trachea, it's the same logic. So every tube you're looking at is going to have the same layers. And look here. What is that? It's cartilage. Those are hyaline cartilage. Those are little cat's eyes. So I can see cartilage that's not in any C ring. It's kind of all the way around. So that means it's not a trachea. I can see the same layers in every tube I look at. Let me prove that. Here's another tube. Close up. Are there four layers here? Let's find out. What's this one here? What's this one here? What's this one here? So the same layers as the trachea, PCC, here's hyaline cartilage, here's a seromucous gland here. So I can see the same layers. So every slide you have all the same layering shows. Right? This just happens to be bronchus. That's going to change if I zoom in one more time to this one. All right, that thing on the top. What is that? Lumen. Yeah. Not a trachea. Yeah, nope. Bronchial. It's a bronchiole, not a bronchus. Bronchiole. How do I know that's not a trachea or a bronchus? What's it nope. missing? No cartilage. There's no cartilage. So the, when I'm dark ages, when I went to college, I learned that once you lose the cartilage, you are by definition a bronchiole. Because bronchus means I have cartilage. So. On a test, I would say, hey, I don't see any cartilage around that tube. That must be a bronchiole. That's how I would interpret that. There's some debate on that. But you're supposed to see what you have instead, which is this red line. What is that red line that wasn't in the other one that is in this one? That was in 231, that line. Smooth muscle, which tells you these things can do what if they have smooth muscle in them? They can contract and change, right? The trachea can't really, but these ones can. So you can have bronchioles that change size. A bronchial would still be a tube, you still have a lumen, you still have a mucosa, you still have a submucosa, you just don't have cartilage in it. You're just getting smaller. Make sense? Yeah. It says cartilage plate, but yes. it's a bronchial. There are bronchioles formerly that have a, a chunk of cartilage, but not a ring. And so they call them a plated bronchial, which I would never bring up on a slide. <laughs> because I don't agree with that definition. Mm -hmm. Right? But well, let's keep going. That's my bronchiole. That's the tube that gets me into the next batch. So, prepare your mind, body, and soul for this next one. This one of my favorite slides ever. Makes me cool. Just curvy enough to hear. All right. So, we're going to look at this thing here versus this thing here. It's all one tube from the side. But what do you notice different about here and here? Dark layer. Darker layer. What about the layer? Maybe it has <laughs> <laughs> the one on the left look a little thicker? Yeah. Okay, so these are both bronchioles. These are tubes getting in my lungs. But this one is thick. This one is thin. Oh, wait, there's blood there. Oh, the blood's way over here. Hmm, what did we learn about smokers? What happens when you smoke? And what happens when it's thick? It gets brittle. It starts cracking. It cracks and doesn't exchange. So, we call this one here a terminal bronchiole, because you're going to die. <laughs> Yep. And then this one is a respiratory bronchial because it's thin enough that I can get gases to cross this membrane. So this side will respire, this one will not, but there's still a bronchial. They're just different types of bronchioles. So a respiratory bronchial is the thinnest kind because you can get gases to exchange or respire. Right? 
So that gives you a difference you're supposed to know. If you go back in your objectives, you're supposed to know the respiratory zone versus the conduction zone. What does respiratory zone mean? Oh, yeah. Gas exchange. So you are in the respiratory zone starting about here, that way. So this side just moves air. Therefore, what zone is that one? Conducting, Conducting zone. Because all I'm doing is moving air in and out of your lungs and not having it go between the blood and out. Yes? Just be clear. Yes. That's not damage. Though. That's not damage. That's not normal. Damage. Same concept, though. So the thicker the tube, the less exchange. Yes. Does all that tissue that's around, all that alveolar stuff, is yep. on the left side, though, is that going to yep. die? No. Okay. It's fine, because there's other tubes coming around that's just not in the slide. Mm -hmm. right. But this is a terminal bronchiole, thicker, conductive. This is a respiratory bronchiole, thinner and respiratory. Okay. Makes sense? But still bronchiole, still a tube with no cartilage. But then what you're supposed to name are the alveolar stuff. Oh, good lord. Okay. Yeah, it's like a hand. And I got to zoom in on this one. All right. So, if I point to some round open space, like here, or there, or there, what have I pointed to? Alveolus. Alveoli or alveolus would be fine. An air sac. Okay, now the problem is there's other words that deal with that one. So let me show you a picture. Give me just a second to find it on Boston site. Yes. This is a label diagram basically of what I just showed you. So here's my bronchiole coming in. And then this tube here is servicing all these air ducts, all these air sacs. So we call that the duct. The alveolar duct is the tube at the end of the bronchiole that basically goes to the air sacs. So your analogy is the stem of a bunch of grapes. The stem is the duct. Each circle would be the grape. All right? So this respiratory bronchiole gets really, really thin and vanishes and becomes an alveolar duct to serve all these alveoli. Yes. Can we see that in contrast with the um, terminal bronchial and the, and the... Sure, not easily though. I don't think there's a slide that shows all three. Um, on this one, they... This over here, I would argue, would be terminal here. And then respiratory would begin about here to here, then duct would be there. Okay, so terminal also applies to the closed end in the... Yes. In the duct. As, yep. well as, the, as well as the thicker lining because yes. it's not conducting. Just depends where you cut it. It's not exchanging. Right. So I would argue, if this were my test, I have a bronchiole here and an alveolar duct kind of there because this opens into the alveoli like here, here, here. So what's the sac then? Then let's, let's do a sac. A sac is a bizarre concept, but it, it does work. Let me show you a sac in this context. It should be this one. Yes. So here we have the same kind of concept. So we got some big bronchial over here. Here's more bronchial here. Thinner, thinner, thinner. Hey, the, this tubing is really thin. In fact, it's gone. And it's servicing these alveoli. So what is from about here to here? What would you call that? That'd be like a duct. Each circle is an alveolus. But look here. Here's a cul-de-sac. We got a bunch of grapes all in a circle. Notice the wording on cul de what? Sac. Okay. That's a sac. An alveolar sac is a dead end of each alveolar duct. Here, 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 here. Those are sacs, so the end of the alveolar duct. Right. So the duct becomes a sac, which leads to alveoli. Yes? So, but the duct is distinct from the respiratory zone? Or? The duct would be included in the respiratory zone, because okay. it's also exchanging. And if you show on there the, the, the difference between the bronchioles, the terminal bronchioles, and the respiratory bronchioles, the this would be a terminal bronchial, I, I would argue, at least down to here. Uh -huh. Respiratory bronchial would be about from here to here. It's really short in this picture. Okay. And this would be a duct from here all the way down. This would be sacs here, here, and here. <coughs> okay. So I'm going to draw you a bad picture, because I'm such a good artiste, helping you between sac, duct, and respiratory stuff. So bear with me. This seems to work in your best. All right. I'm going to draw a bronchiole there, okay? And I'm going to take that and do something like this out of it. And these ones all have little circles near them. 
So if these are tubes that have circles on them, what kind of tube am I trying to draw? Alveolar, Alveolar ducts. Meaning the stem of the grapes. So I just drew two alveolar ducts coming off of this bronchiole. Then I'm going to continue my duct out. I'm going to do something like this. It's a hand. A hand, indeed. Or in this context, what am I representing with these circles here? That's the sap. That's how beautifully anatomical correct it is. So the duct leads to a, usually a sac, which is the end of the duct. The alveoli, or any of the circles, anywhere on that duct. So where's the terminal? terminal yeah, where does be, it go from terminal to terminal will be like, respiratory? Like here. Like head of the bronchial. So here's terminal, here's respiratory, there's head duct. The the respiratory. Like okay. So the so sac is, there, is part of the duct. Is there semi-diffusion? In the respiratory. The fusion would start here. Okay. And go that way. Okay. Everything downstream in the respiratory bronchioles. So you know a sac when you see it. It's just hard to define it. But it's like these little cul-de sacs like in the suburbs. Right? <laughs> so here's your main, here's you know Foster Road, whatever, here's some street don't name, and here's where all the rich people live. Okay? <laughs> we don't have cul de sacs inside, we call the them dead ends. <laughs> You okay, that concept? Yeah. All right. So if you can identify those kind of things on a slide, trade yelling, then you pretty much got it. So you've been through everything for the lab. Use the rest of your time as wisely or as poorly as you choose. Next week, I'll be presenting a lecture and a lab.